mounting. My body is cold. I was foolish. I believed the apparition. Ishtar said to me, as you refuse to believe in love incarnate, love shall be your judge, and you shall wander across the ages to regain that which was taken from you. <coughs> that was a year ago, in this cave, on this same mountain. I had set off on a mission for the crown. I had fallen into a fever. The Turks from the mountain foresaw my death, and Ishtar, that goddess, that phantom, appeared to me. She offered to cure me if I loved her, yet I refused her. I did not believe in her. It is Sophia that I love. The next day that the war was over, I fled for England, determined to find her, Sophia. My maps, my journeys, and then the curse was carried through. Sophia disappeared the night before our wedding. It is she whom I have followed here. She, the goddess who took Sophia from me. Perhaps it is just my madness. I do not feel cold any longer. I must be delirious. Oh, I can see her smile. Do you not recognize me? I am Ishtar. The Greeks worship me under another name, Aphrodite. Here, in Campania, I traveled from Egypt under the name of Isis, with the merchants of Delos. Today is the thirteenth day before the Calends of September, of the first year of the reign of Titus. You are in Pompeii. Sophia lives here. In exactly five days, Vesuvius will begin to erupt and swallow up the town in a storm of flames and rocks. Pompeii will disappear and be forgotten. You have four days to find Sophia and convince her to leave with you.
Greetings, stranger. Greetings to you. Guess to my friend Papinius, I am Menianus the Fooler. Greetings, friend Menianus. I am Adrian, Papidius' guest and a friend of his son Secundus. I'm here from Narbonne, and I am a citizen of Marseille. Secundus, how does he fare so far from our town? At least you have arrived. Worried that he had not seen you, Papidius feared some ill had befallen you on the road. That is all he could think about. It has been impossible to talk business with him, you know. Even the most pressing issues. What business is it that is so worrying you? Such shame! You cannot imagine the filthy depths to which fullers will stoop to increase their profits. One of our number, whom I shall not deem to name, is selling cloth at a ridiculously low price. People are fighting to buy from him, but I have checked. It is of deplorable quality, which botched carding and, and mediocre sulfuration. For days I have been trying to convince Popilius to be my patron in a trial against this thief. How do you recognize cloth of such bad quality? Ah, a child can tell the difference. You just have to scratch it slightly with a blade. The thread unwinds and the poorly dyed material soon loses its color. Do you know of a woman by the name of Sophia? She is a freed slave. An emancipated slave? A young'un. Don't know her. <laughs> With such a name, she's not likely to be wandering the streets. Ha! <laughs> Search the libraries. <laughs> nah, I jest. Go and find the women of the town. All of the town gossips go to Eumachia's, in the wool market, on the forum. What was that trembling this morning? Just a small tremor. Nothing to worry about. We're used to them here. The priests do what they can to expiate the marvel. Secundus is well, but wishes to return. Just the goal we need. You have arrived just at the right time. Secundus will not be back before the wine harvest, but we can still interrogate you on your Gallic techniques for preserving wine. I shall extract your secrets from you. Uh, my name is Papidius Hermes, and I have a thermopolium which belongs to Papidius. Aphrodisius, my brother in emancipation, works on his vineyard. Secundus has gone to look for graphs in Marseille, which he has to bring back before the grape harvest. It's a good time for grafting. I dream of acclimatizing the famous Allobroge vintage here, which is so popular in Vienna. Those northern wines are more subtle than ours, but what will happen to their vines in our climate? Why do Gallic wines interest you so? I live for wine. And it also reaps financial rewards. You see, we are extremely proud of our wine in Campania, but the customer's taste change as wines go in and out of fashion. Our customers' palates are getting more delicate. They prefer sweeter, more flavoured and clearer wine. Heaven forbid their wine should even the slightest hint of red. Our oh, flimsy young people are scared of being floored after the first goblet. These are townspeople, pasty-faced weaklings. Ah, our wines. You know that wine has a taste of the soil the vine has grown in. Here, it is dark, robust and strong, like the soil of Campania. We drink it cut with water, honey or spices. Tell me, where could I find a liberated slave girl by the name of Sophia? Is that all you know about her? Her name and nothing else. Venus is laughing at you because apart from her visant old hag by the same name, a widow and the sister of my father, I know no other Sophia Sophie Sophicus. Look, go to the Domviri's office at the Forum and ask to see their archives. They may have kept a record of her liberation. Bye, Bacchus. As long as the emperor hold out and the customers have the stomach to continue drinking, 
Vulcan can keep on scratching his back under Vesuvius. Greetings, Secundus Popidius Augustianus. I am Adrian, friend of your son Secundus. He wrote to you to inform you of my arrival. Ah, uh, salutations, Adrian. As a friend of my dear Secundus, you are most welcome in my home. He told me how you received him in your house in Marseille. <laughs> this is your home for as long as you wish to remain. How is Secundus? Has he recovered from his defeat at the elections? I believe so, but the slightest mention of the election silences him completely. Is it known why he lost? Alas, nobody understands why. He led an excellent campaign, and neither Eumachia nor Julia Felix want to tell me more. The whole affair is shrouded in mystery. I do not understand. Our family has always provided counselors to the town. Our co-citizens have placed their trust in us for many years. Secundus had no particularly remarkable opposition, and our customers led his campaign. Our greatest supporters, two of the town's great ladies, Eumachia and Julia Felix, were supposed to inform me of any problems via the network of Roman wives and their servants, but they told me nothing. They claim they do not understand what happened either, but um, I have my doubts. Like her mother and grandmother, Eumachia runs the wool market and is a popular priestess of Ceres. She inherited the virtues, riches and prestige of her grandmother, whose name she intentionally borrowed. As such, she knows all the citizens' wives. She's a great friend of the noble Julia Felix, and we often attend the same banquets. Julia Felix, you have to understand, is a great lady of the city. She's a brilliant personality with much prestige. She can influence the votes of all the followers of Isis. And it seems that at the last moment, she did not support Secundus. I never discovered why. Although our family has always come from Campania, we are particularly devoted to Isis. We belong to the College of Isis. One of our free men was the great priest of the goddess Isis, and another rebuilt the sanctuary after the disaster in the name of his son, Celsinus. The College of Isis is the Merchants' Club. We meet strangers there from Greece, Egypt, Phoenicia, and so on. Our very own princes are recent devotees of the goddess and have written the feasts of Osiris into the calendar. Why did this free man rebuild the sanctuary in his son's name? As a freed slave, Ampliatus could not embrace a political career, but his son, who was born a free man, could. Ampliatus, therefore, rebuilt the temple in his name. By way of recognition, Celsinus was made a member of the Order of Decurions at the age of six. <laughs> Without a doubt, the youngest recruit in the Order's history. What disaster are you talking about? Oh, a terrible, prodigious earthquake, which destroyed our town 17 years ago, during Nero's reign. We've still not finished reconstruction. You'll see for yourself, there's building going on everywhere, and the recent tremors have not helped. Like Penelope, we always have to get back to work. We always have to rebuild what the earth is constantly destroying. If you have nothing more to say, I would suggest that we meet in front of the Comitium at the Forum. I shall be there in the morning. pay for everything on my cart if I cannot get to the market to sell it. You stinking yokel. Why should my mule move for you? I'm not going to whip it. You're the one who should be given a lashing. Ooh, wait until the Adel sees to you. What is going on here? That idiot is blocking the road with his cart. I have to get to the market on time or I won't sell a thing. And all my vegetables were rot in this heat. That stupid mule is wasting my time. And if this goes on for much longer, all my wares too. What a moaner. He stinks of garlic so much he could kill all the flies that buzz around him. <laughs> 
And you, you stink so much of cheap wine, you could make a, 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 a fuller sick. There may be a solution to this. You swine! Deserter! are saved. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Here, here, take these delicious dates from Alexandra. They're sugared and soft and overpriced as well. Greetings, friend. I am a stranger here, and I wish to see a Duomvir. Me too, and they have not yet returned. I am waiting, my ship is waiting, my slaves are waiting, and the only business I was hoping to get out of this voyage is setting sail for other ports. My name is Harpocrates. I'm a merchant from Alexandria. For two days now, the land breeze I need to leave this port has not materialized. The wind is still blowing off the sea, as if at night the land did not cool. If this continues, I will have to give up rejoining Narbonne. I wanted to go to Narbonne to buy wine and sell my linen. I have done good business here. Egyptian blue is still very popular with Pompey's painters, and my compatriots are great lovers of Campania oil. Unfortunately, they do not care much for your wine. And uh, Eumachia is offering me too low a price for my linen. I could perhaps find you some Gallic wine here. Wait here, will you? I shall go and speak with my host about it. I shall be happy to wait. I have nothing else to do. The Duomviri have not returned. So I shall go to Eumachia's market to try and negotiate with her again. The Dumviri are absent, stranger, and will probably not return all day. One accompanied the Haruspex to inspect the aftermath of last night's tremors, and the other went to see the damage to the temples and give a report to the priests. Popidius is my host, and I would like to check the town records. Check the town records? Just like that. Popidius should have told you that the records were moved after the earthquake. And until the building next door has been restored, nobody can consult them except the Emperor himself. You are not the Emperor, I believe? Valley, then. I have nothing more to say to you, Valley. I met a merchant from Alexandria who could be of some use to us. How so? He wants to rejoin Narbonne to sell wine and buy linen. Well, I wish him the best of luck, but what does that have to do with us? We could sell him the cargo of wine that awaits me at the port in exchange for his linen. You will have a few amphora left, plus my grafts. Well, of course, but we have no need for linen. 
You told me yourself how close Julia Felix was to Umakia and how she would know why your son failed at the elections. The merchant refuses to sell his linen to Umakia. She offered him too low a price. If we exchange our wine for his linen, we can offer the linen to Umakia. She would be very grateful to you for that. Ah, the gods inspire you. Tell your merchant that the matter is concluded. Here's the sales contract and a payment for any further expenses. If you will, I shall ask you to be the one who speaks to Umakia. Who knows? Your skills as a go-between will perhaps penetrate her reserve. Now, I must now find the painter and get him to restore my fresco. Um, uh, we shall meet at the baths at around um, one o'clock. I may have found a way for you to make up for lost time, if the wind comes up tomorrow morning. By what happy coincidence? Uh, do you have some Gallic wine to sell me? Here is a contract that will give you a whole cargo of wine from the stores of Narbonne. It is waiting at the port. Just ask for Stephanus. What do you require in exchange? the stock of linen you wanted to sell in Narbonne. Isis ensured that our paths would meet. Wait, uh, 12, 27, 19, Oh, miscarriage. Uh, perfect. I owe you the difference of 300 sestertia. And uh, by way of thanks, take this present. It's an Egyptian knife, a wonder of handiwork. This cloth is quite simply made for you. Believe me, no other woman in the city could carry it with more majesty and elegance. That saffron color so harmoniously matches your skin. Truly, you will make Venus herself green with envy. Greetings, woman. My name is Adrian, Papidius' guest. He has advised me to come and see Umaki on his behalf on an urgent matter. Where can I find her? My mistress is busy and does not wish to be disturbed. I cannot go and tell her at the moment because I have to inspect their goods. The prices are too low and it's very suspicious. Feel how smooth, how soft it is. Believe me. This material has no equal in all of Pompeii. Excuse me, I believe I know a way of proving that. Well, Fuller, you were right. This cloth has no equal in Pompeii. We have no more to do here, Sophia. Let us return to the house. What does my slave have to tell me? Leave us, Caius. I shall deal with your matter later. Adrian, I thank you. It would appear that your host, Papidius, advised you to come and see me. What do you want from me? I cannot refuse any request from a friend of Papidius. Who was that woman customer the Fuller nearly robbed? And was the young girl accompanying her a slave? That was Lavinia, Octavius Quartio's wife. The young girl is not a slave. She was freed by Lavinia's husband. Lavinia adores her. I come to offer you the cargo of linen for which the merchant from Alexandria asked such a high price. I happen to have bartered it down to a very good deal. Well, what a coincidence. I was very displeased to have let that one pass. How can I show you my thanks? 
I have no political ambition, and my riches in Gaul are quite sufficient. I have dedicated my life to friendship. Popidius' son Secundus has become very dear to me. Whatever he suffers, I suffer also. He is greatly saddened by his electoral failure, and I would like to understand what happened. Yet when I ask the question, everyone suddenly looks very uncomfortable and nobody will answer me. That is indeed a very delicate subject. I have always refused to speak to Pupidius about it, worried that he might get angry with his son. You see, it is all a matter of reputation. Julia Felix may be a woman, but she managed to gain a strategic role in the elections. We other women cannot vote nor take on a political career, but we can influence others, perhaps more than people think. Our reputation can thus be our greatest strength, or our Achilles heel. The College of Isis often meets at the house of Julia Felix for ritual banquets. Her views on electoral matters are always noted, but she cannot make any mistakes. She has to preserve the reputation of Isis whom many wicked tongues have previously called the go-between. She is therefore very careful to only support candidates of impeccable morals. As you know, the followers of Isis were supposed to be supporting Secundus, but public opinion often turns against the followers of Isis, and they are accused of all sorts of debauchery. How could anyone question Secundus' morals? That is the problem. How shall I say this? Not all followers of Isis are of good origin, and, well, a few somewhat shady characters who were great supporters of his candidacy wrote on the walls of several Copone. Secundus had the writing erased very quickly, but the damage was done. He became known as the candidate who had stooped the lowest. People write on walls during all campaigns here. When a person wants to support a candidate, they simply write his name on the wall of their house in the hope of getting him more votes. This graffiti is extremely important. It can make you a decurion or the town laughingstock. A virtuous woman cannot allow herself to speak of such places. To even mention their name under this roof is absolutely inconceivable. Caius, you can thank this man as your savior. He has just closed an exceptional deal for me, and I am no longer in the mood to drag you in front of the Aedile. Come and see me tomorrow, and we will solve these matters. give you thanks. I overheard the end of your conversation. I know who she was talking about. Go to the Capona of Dionysos, the freed slave of Lucius Vetusius Placidius on the Street of Plenty. You should find them there. What she could not tell you was that some low-rate whores, girls of the street who sell themselves for four sous, call for people to vote for Secundus. Ask Palmyra or Ferusa. They will explain everything to you, <laughs> if you're lucky. Might the wicker of these baskets lacerate the fool who weaved them. Might the stones of these olives choke him. What have these baskets done to deserve your abuse? Well, they don't stand up properly. That's what they've done. You see, I have two baskets of olives that I put up there. I cannot leave them on the counter or the first passerby will pilfer them as soon as I went into the room to serve a customer. The problem is, I never know which 
which one's full and which one's empty, and I spend all my time getting down one and the other, and, and as they're not stable, half the time I knock them over. Hmm, there must be a way to solve that. Fine, stranger. <laughs> Look, let me get you a drink in the back room to thank you. Uh, but, um, one word of advice. Don't get involved in their game. I think that rogue Lucius the painter's playing with loaded dice. How can you spot loaded dice? Oh, if you don't know about dice, it's simple. You can't spot them. You'll end up losing the tunic off your back. Now, you dig out the spots on a die and pour a bit of lead in. Then you cover the die in a little stucco, re-engrave it, and that's that. It's practically impossible to detect. Until it's weighed, of course. Do you know Sophia, the freed slave of Octavius Quartio? Sophia? Oh, I have heard of her. Oh, she doesn't come here, of course. <laughs> but I see her go past, with her eyes to the ground, accompanying Lavinia, Octavius' wife. Lavinia adores her. She treats her like a daughter. Oh, Lavinia's a great lady. For example, Sophia is fond of dates. Oh, they're very expensive and very rare. The little freed slave girl would never usually have the chance to eat them, no. Well, whenever she can, Lavinia buys a little basket of dates for Sophia. Mm. I know because a friend of mine sells fruit at the market. Mm. He told me about it. Do you know where I could find a woman of the streets people call Palmyra? Or another known as Ferusa? Oh, I see, an orgy. Whoa. Well, for a stranger, you don't waste much time. And you're obviously well informed, too. Well, I'll tell you, Palmyra is not exactly from the top of the basket, but she's a great girl. She works for the love of her life, a gladiator by the name of Publius Ostorius, who's a free man, by the way. Well, she just happens to be here, in the back room, witnessing the ruin of a merchant. <laughs> well, well, the lucky messenger. I am very happy to see you, young protege of Popidius. Popidius? What a small city this is. He's just asked me to restore his fresco. So, that is why you bought my whole stock of Egyptian blue. Fate is a real joker. And talking of fate, I'm losing all my fortune. I seem to be playing against a real wizard. This man is constantly throwing sixes. Back home in Gaul, we have a trick for recognizing bewitched dice. I need the blind servant of justice. Wait a minute. Wait, I have an idea that will please you both. So, Master, the dice are falling in your favor. I think it is only fair to change them for the next game. And if you will, I shall be your opponent. That's a good one. Let me buy everyone a pitcher of warm mulled wine. Well, Adrian, thanks to you I will remember this journey with a smile on my face and a full purse in my pocket. <laughs> I am leaving this place of sin. 
Meet me at the baths. I would like to give you my sacred water. Keep this necklace for my country as a modest token of my immense recognition. Adrian, I beg of you, it was just a game. I was going to give him his money back. I beg of you, do not denounce me. What, what can I do for you? Tell me, you have agreed to restore Papidius's fresco, have you not? No. With the works and the recent tremors, I can promise nothing. Not even to Papidius. What was this Egyptian blue the merchant talked of? It is one of the rarest pigments there is. When somebody orders a fresco, the price we give includes the salary of our workers and all raw materials, primers and pigments. All that is, except for two types of pigment, red and blue. They're very expensive, and the customer always has to pay more for them. Well, that's what you can do for me. You now have a priority customer, Papidius. You start tomorrow. But that's impossible. I cannot. I'll hear no more of it. You know, that is also why we Pompeians like putting red on our walls. It's a sign of wealth, a kind of ostentatiousness, if you like. That expensive blue. I would very much appreciate it if you offered as much as he wants of it to Papidius for free. Those cursed dice. Very well, I agree. Oh, congratulations, Adrian. Papidius is right to have you as a friend. You can come back whenever you want. Greetings, girl. Uh, greetings to you, Pommy. Greetings to you, beautiful stranger. Apple of my eye, cutie pie. Greetings. Uh, don't mistake my intentions. I come not as a customer, but for some information. I hail from Gaul. I'm a friend of Secundus, son of Papidius. Out of simple curiosity, and because he's dear to me, I would like to find out why he lost the elections, and... Oh, what a terrible business. Farouz and me, we just wanted to have a laugh. One of my lovers is a distinguished man, a free man who is an electoral agent. He comes here often to chat with us. He convinced us to support Secundus, and it seemed like a funny idea. It was the first time someone had asked us for our opinion on politics. We spoke about it to all the girls, and everyone wrote Secundus's name on the walls of the Capone. Believe me, we didn't want to embarrass him, and we certainly didn't want to make him lose the elections. Some of the girls are followers of Isis, and they told me that Julia Felix would appreciate it if Secundus made a large donation to the temple. A move on his behalf would sort out everything and perhaps help him win the elections next year. Here, sacred water from the Nile. I usually take a full amphora of it to the priests in the temple, but uh, my boat is too full now. Keep it. It will bring you luck, or give it to the next person to be honored by your goodness. If you happen to visit Alexandria one day, come and find Harpocrates. The time you decide to stay at my house will be like honey for my heart.
Papidius, today has been wonderful. For Secundus, everything should be sorted out by the next elections, as long as he gives a donation to the Temple of Isis. But I think that a present to Julia Felix will be appreciated also. As he's not here, you could give her this beautiful necklace from Egypt on his behalf. She will give thanks for such a sign of loyalty. And so the painter will come tomorrow to begin work on your fresco. In fact, he offers you all the red and blue pigments you want for free, as thanks for the honor you give him by being his customer. <laughs> Let our guest charm us with his poetic talents. <laughs> Poetry is an art in which the Gauls excel. We still sing the poetry of Catullus. May I ask our beautiful lyre player to give me some musical accompaniment? Vulcan's furnace and the midsummer sun, the fires of my soul loving heart. Nothing and no one will ever put them out. The floods of Xanti cooled the boiling Achilles, the clear water of the nymphs and the sacred source of Dian soothed the burns of a loving heart. Red hot iron plunged in the blacksmith's cold water hardens, but my burning heart softens like a well cooked turnip in the pot. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> for a goal, I have heard better. Now, let us go out to the garden. <laughs> I've known you to be more inspired than that. 